Hey folks, today I'm excited to share with you a conversation that I had recently with the amazing Patrice Dievens, who is a belly dancer, an actress, and a minister, and uses all of these talents together to create something that is uniquely her own. She reached out to me through my YouTube channel, we are both fellow YouTubers, and she is an African-American dancer in our community. She has been dancing many styles of dance her whole life, and belly dance is among them, and one of the most recent to add to her repertoire. She's been dancing professionally and teaching on YouTube, and so we discussed today her experience as an African-American woman coming into the dance, the ideas she had about the dance before coming into the dance, and how the dance has shaped her and how she has shaped the dance to create something that is uniquely hers. So I present this in an effort to continue the conversation and continue to hear the voices of African-American dancers, especially in the belly dance community, to understand the journey that they have taken, to understand the struggles that they have overcome, and to find ways to move forward positively, to create more inclusivity, to actively fight against racism, and to create a truly open community where everyone can come, explore and enjoy this amazing dance. So I give this to you today as a way to listen in to yet another voice in the conversation. And I appreciate you being here with me. So I just want to thank you so much for Patrice for being willing to meet with me to have this open and honest conversation. I was so excited when you contacted me after my previous video because I feel like the more we can get together and just have like open and honest discussions the more we can learn, the more we can move forward with better knowledge, and the more we can just understand the experience that African American dancers have had, especially in the belly dance realm, you know, all throughout the US during, you know, the last the last couple of decades. And I think that these conversations and your voices are so incredibly important. So thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for opening up this conversation. It's so special. I appreciate it so much. Uh, I'm I'm honored to be to be able to have a conversation yeah, like this. Beautiful. So yeah, so I I really am very interested in your story, and I want my viewers to know your story. I feel like as a belly dancer, and I've been doing this for 20 years now. I've always had the sort of rose-colored glasses view that like belly dance is for everyone, and it doesn't matter who you are or what you look like, you know, gender or race or size or sexual preference. Like I, you know, cause I've seen, I've seen a lot of that. Like I've seen a lot of open inclusivity and a lot of positivity in the last 20 years, but I feel like I have not been aware of things that are also happening that aren't as inclusive. And so I'm curious to get different in dancers, personal experiences to sort of help me understand how things are. And then we'll talk more about like, what we need to do moving forward to make belly dance that rosy, fabulous, wonderful, all-inclusive thing that I've always thought it would be. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got into the dance? What drew you to the dance, your first belly dance class, your first performance, and what it was like for you to get into the scene? All right. Well, you know, my story is unique and different in the sense that, um, well, my story starts with my grandma being a preacher. I came from a grandma that's a preacher and I took after her. So I am now a minister, I minister to women. And I, the, I also started off as a, a dancer and an actress and a performer. So I had these both sides of me that was like the dancer performer and one that was so strong in the Lord and Christian, Christian faith. And uh, in the Christian faith, how you become a Christian is to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And that happened at 15, where I asked Jesus in my heart to be my Lord and Savior. But then between then and later on in life, I won't tell my age, oh, maybe I will. <laughs> then I actually got to a place in my life where I had a pivotal moment. I was into dancing and everything, two things going on at the same time. The spiritual side is I gave my life to God. I said, that's it. I'm living for you, Lord. You tell me what to do. I'm going to do it. But Back when I was younger, leading up to that, I already decided I was going to be an actress. I was in high school. My dance teacher and my acting teacher were fighting over me like, no, we want her to be the star. You know, and I chose acting because I just thought of this today, by the way. But um, I didn't feel like I was able to, to advance in the way that I was good at dancing in the dance world. It was always something unique and different in, in the sense that my abilities were more of an international dancing and modern dance, but I was so good at dancing all kinds of dances from any country. And then I was also good at my modern dance and all the professional stuff and classical dancing. But 
as I grew older, while the Christian side was going on, I was learning who I was as a dancer. And in college, I was always doing Caribbean dance. And I grew up in a Hispanic neighborhood and I danced just Puerto, uh, salsa, merengue. So I was building this repertoire and I'm like, okay, while I'm a professional, I have all these, you know, modern dance and jazz and all this professional dancing. I'm also a natural dancer. And I started to realize that I picked up international dance so well. And then later on, I said, there's no room for it. This is early on. I'm, I'm a lot older than I look. And now there's so much room for dance in so many different genres. And I'm like, wow, this is my time. But I was already going into my acting. And then at that pivotal moment in my life, the Lord said, I want you to dance. I'm like, yeah, but I think I should, that's my thing. That's my personal thing that I love, but I don't do it professionally. I, I do it professionally when, when the time comes, but I want to focus on my acting. But the Lord said, no, I want you to dance for me. And I'm like, okay. So I did a dance fitness program and I incorporated my international dance. And he says, no, I want you to, to belly dance. That's what my, what we consider it, rock shark. We know what it really is called, but you know, mm -hmm. my understanding, you know, what I, is he knew what I understood. And I'm like, what? And I had already been doing the dances. I had already been incorporating it because of all this, this uh, the ability, the fact that I could pick up so many dances and it, I, I, I was into dance fitness. So of course we had all these different dances in there with Zumba influence and all that. And um, I, I call myself someone who had an idea for Zumba before Zumba, but that's you know, my thing. Because <laughs> cause I was so into international dance way before Zumba and I wanted to show it to the world. No one had been interested. And then Zumba came along and I was like, okay, if you can't beat them, join them. And so then after this, I had my own dance fitness program. It was unique. It was unique in the sense that um, it came from the strong dancer's background as a natural dancer and a trained dancer with my degrees in dance and theater and all that. And had brought it. I said, okay, Lord, I'm doing it. And I did a DVD and I did all that. And then he switched it on me. He's like, okay, I want you to belly dance. I'm like, this is where you come in. I'm like, I don't want to belly dance. It's, they're intimidating. And <laughs> this is what you want to hear. Let me tell you what you want. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> It seems so closed and it seems so like they're gonna not include me. They're not, you know, no, I don't wanna do that. Can I just keep doing it the way I've been doing it? I was like, no, that's what I want you to do. So that's when, you know, as a dancer, I believe that dance is a language. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, sure, you can kind of learn some stuff over here. I learned Spanish from my um, best friend growing up in, in a, a Hispanic neighborhood. But I went to Spain. To immerse myself in the language to really learn it properly. So I felt the same way with belly dance. I was like, okay, so now let me learn this language. That's because I see dance as language. And let me learn it properly so that I can make sure that I'm speaking this language well. So mm -hmm. um, because the Lord told me to do this, and I believe that um, in my faith, it was part of my woman's ministry. It turned into part of my woman's ministry. I was already doing a dance fitness woman's ministry. And I said, okay, Lord, how, why belly dance? The more I prayed and talked to the Lord, the more I'm like, duh, a woman's ministry belly dance, that makes 100% make sense. And I was like, duh, I'm perfect for this because I love this, you know what I mean? So I just started to answer those questions so that I can answer the question by asking the Lord and just learning and just going through this journey. And now I've come to the understanding that it fits perfectly with my ministry for women of spirituality and sensuality, something that's been a lifelong thing for me. The Lord knew this because he made me, but then I had to make it my own. And that's where I would like to talk to you more about where I am and how I use it versus how others use it. And I said, Lord, you know, I don't look this, you know what I mean? I had to, I want to talk to you more about that, but how I arrived, it really wasn't my idea. It was the Lord's idea. And I'm discovering every day how it's such a blessing for women and how I use it for them to unlock their joy. And that's what I've been doing for years. And I'm like, Lord, I was a little nervous at first, but this is amazing. This is a great idea. Of course it was a great idea. Of uh, <laughs> course, yeah, I'm sure it's like, I told you so, right? Yeah. I love, Sorry. I mean, it's a beautiful story that you were called to it. And a couple of things that I, you know, so many things that I took from that, like, obviously, yes, for, for women, this is such, and even for a lot of men, you know, this is a very empowering oh, dance. It is very sensual. It helps a lot of people unlock and work through trauma. There's a lot of healing aspects of dance and art in general, but I feel like specifically this dance, because you're so in touch with your body and it is so creative, right? At its heart, it's, you know, an improvisational and you're creating dance with yes. the music. So yeah. yeah, I can imagine that it fits in really well with your women's ministry and would be like a, a great tool for people to use to find centeredness and spirituality. And I, I, I love that so much. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, um, 
to applaud. Like, I love that you kind of came to it from a place of, I do all these different dances and this feels very natural to me, but I love that you say that you decided to go in and actually like study it, to learn the language, like to go to Spain and immerse yourself, yes. to get into class and learn it, because that's something that's big within the community, especially of, of longtime dancers and instructors is, oh, yes. It's so important to respect the culture, right? And then to really like learn about the culture, learn about the, the dance and to really truly understand it, which allows you to do all the fabulous things you do with it, which we'll talk about. But what I want to go back to a couple of minutes ago, you mentioned, and I'm so curious how when you first thought, because you do all these dances, but when you were first called to belly dance, the first thing you thought was, oh no, there's so, that's so intimidating. I'll never be accepted. Now, was that, was that a racial thing in your mind or was it just in general? Like, I don't, I don't know how to, I couldn't touch that. Like why, why intimidating and why, why the worry? I'm curious. Okay. So I'm going to preface. I'm always going to be honest. So please. And thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, Sahara. And I would, I think you would agree with all that's been going on. Do you feel like there's some things you didn't know might've been racial that you just thought, you didn't really stop to think what it was, you just felt it. And then now you're looking back and like, was that because of the color? You see what I mean? So it's kind of in that place where I never stopped. I'm like you, not quite Switzerland, but as an African-American woman growing up with so much, I said, I'm not gonna jump there quickly. This is what I would always do because I wanted to have conversations. This is what I love about you and this is why I felt so connected is that, you know, I'll go there, but first let me check off the list and make sure that's what this is. So mm -hmm. if I had a job or if I had anything, I was like, let me just make sure I've done all the things I was supposed to do. Everything looks fine. You are acting a little strange. You didn't treat me the same. You know what I mean? I make sure I go through all and, and I, I, like I said, I'm older than I look. I've, so I've been through a long history of watching America get to where it is today, um, growing up in the 70s. Let me give you that much. And um, um, so um, I decided, because my parents were hippies and they were um, sit, they did sit-ins and very intellectual, and they, they actually fought for equal rights. And so I grew up in a home with these intellectual parents and grandma that was a preacher, and I had to like balance all that stuff. And um, I said, I know what I'm going to do. I know God loves everyone. And I'm just going to go in fresh and make sure I'm doing my part and there's legitimate reason if there is an issue or anything. If I've checked everything and I think it is, then it probably is. So with that in mind, <laughs> with belly dance, I have to say these are the things that were going through my mind. And I think things have changed since Shakira. But before that, there were older women in America that looked, they were white, older, I didn't like the dress. I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't like the aura. And it seemed very uh, uh, um, exclusive where they're not inviting. I felt as though, sure, there was this, this hofla where everybody can come and have fun. But if you ever wanted to do it seriously, then we were going to, it's almost like being an opera singer. It was unapproachable, inapproachable. Mm -hmm. Only the ones that did it these many years and did it with this person. So it was almost like if I, God told me, I want you to be an opera singer right now. I'm like, what? where do I begin? You know what I mean? It was one of those things where it was kept so protected that it didn't feel inviting. But then, and I also met a belly dancer in my area that I tried to collaborate with and do international dance with and very standoffish, very, didn't give me, it wasn't very inviting and older. And it was just what I thought it would be. I said, if I'm going to come into this, is it Egyptian? Is it Turkish? Is it what, what, where am I going? And a lot of people are like, okay, you can do tribal, you can do this, you can do cabaret. And I knew what I wanted from the beginning. I knew I wanted to cabaret. I knew I wanted that. So I was like, okay, you chose that. What do they look like? Well, none of them look like me. You know, that was the other thing. And then I had to make some decisions on how I was going to approach it. And I know the Lord made me, so he knows how I'm going to approach things. I'm going to be me. I'm going to approach it being me. I think I may be the Caribbean fusion belly dancer. You're the only one I've heard of, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm going to say it, I'm the, I know I'm the one in Atlanta, but I am the Caribbean fusion belly dancer, but I'm definitely the Caribbean belly dancing minister. We know that for sure, right? For sure, for sure. <laughs> so I just opened up my doors to belly dance and I said, okay, I'm stepping out on faith. And I got all these responses. A lot of people of color, African-American people, it, they are used to belly dance here, but they're not used to seeing me. They're used to belly dance, but not seeing me. There was another girl that was an African-American woman that 
kind of made herself look more middle, middle Eastern because she had been doing it for years and that's how she had to su su um, succeed and she might have paved the way in some way. But when I came in, I had made the decision in my life that I was in this place and I'm gonna go like I am. The first uh, party that I got was a woman that said, I just came back from Jamaica and I just want this Jamaican theme. And I was like, that's it. I had that in my heart. I had always had that Caribbean, you know, in there. And I said, Lord, you tell me what kind of belly dancer. And that's how he told me. And so this is where the black thing, the African descent comes in. I have dark skin, so I stand out. I have obviously full hair. I have a curve in my back. For years, my, 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 my uh, dance teacher would teach me how to straighten my back because I always had an arch. So I've learned that. Even when I straighten my back, I still have a bottom. As an African-American woman, I stand out no matter what I do. And when you're trying to get the lines and you're trying to do the moves, I'm gonna stand out no matter what I do. And so um, one of our top belly dancers, um, I believe it's Copeland, yeah, I think her name is, uh, she's even talked about it and she's amazing. So it's something about the way our muscles are, the way our bodies are, the way we can't, it's unapologetically what it is. And sometimes institutionalizing something can exclude if we don't look exactly the same. And when you think of ballet or you think of modern or you think of now with belly dance adopting those things, um, while we can do those moves just fine, when we come out of where our dances come from, our bodies just move slightly different and it's beautiful, but it's different and it's okay. And I think when you get into, when you start to institutionalize things, you start to say, no, this is the way. This is the way you gotta look, this way has to be. You gotta be careful when my body comes in and it doesn't do it exactly, but it's still good. You know, I'm bringing a flavor that only I can bring. It's like my fingerprint. If you're going to teach anything, especially dance or anything that has to do with God giving the gifts, you gotta keep that opening air for, did you do the movement right? But when you do it, your body, it just says it a little different than my body. Where can the teacher see that? And where is that okay? Going back, like I think there's a couple of really good things that I think instructors can pull from this, talking about different bodies in your classroom. And this is something that has, has always been a part of my classroom. And I, you know, a lot of classrooms that I've gone into, but some, some other classes, not so much, that even regardless of race, you get a lot of bodies in your classroom. I am blessed to have a huge variety of bodies of my, in my classroom, you know, between ages and weights and heights and just everyone looks different. And mm -hmm. so because of that, the, you know, the dance is going to look different on yes. each person. Right. And I love that. And I always try to let my students know that that it's okay because people will say, well, I keep doing it, but I don't look like you. And I'm like, no, of course you don't look like me. You're not me. Like, you're gonna look like you. I learned this dance from a woman who's older who looks nothing like me. She's like five inches taller than me and has got hips for days. And what she did, <laughs> it didn't look the same on me. And luckily for me, I never felt self-conscious about that. I never felt that I was perhaps doing things incorrectly because it didn't look right. You know, I was happy with how it looked on me. So I was like, I'll do it my way. And she never stopped me and said, oh, no, no, you know, it should look like the way I do it. Right. Yeah. So I think this is huge. Just understanding that in this dance form, I don't believe we should strive for everybody to look exactly the same. It's true. That, like when things become a bit more institutionalized, you know, what, what do we gain? right, by belly dance now being kind of a recognized thing. There's festivals everywhere. There's classes on every corner. Like it's, it's a thing that people search out. You can find it online, like it's gaining respect. But you know, what do you lose? And I feel like what we lose very much depends on who the leaders are in the industry. What are they supporting and what are they promoting, right? Which is where we need to be, to be really careful. And so there's definitely a divide, as you've experienced, between like, I just want to have fun and dance at the Hustler this weekend, and I would like to get hired to dance at a wedding here in town. And this is, I think, where I finally understood my misunderstanding of the inclusivity of the belly dance world. I feel like, for the most part, and I know that it's not, it's not where it needs to be, if you want to just come to a class and have a good time, you can probably, find, definitely here in Houston, there are plenty of places, no matter who you are, you're going to find your home, yeah. right? Now, I understand that sometimes it's 
a little, it's less comfortable for people to walk into a space where they do not see their, their own person reflected back to them. They're like, I do not see other people who yeah, look like me. I do not yeah. see a large percentage of African Americans. I do have, you know, several in my class, which makes me very grateful to, to know that they feel comfortable in my classroom. That's very important to me. Um, but regardless of, you know, looking, looking at another step past that is, you know, are the instructors being supportive and being open? And I, I think you can certainly find that in, in the belly dance community. But now if we take it, you know, down the road and someone wants to go pro, somebody wants to go to the restaurant, somebody wants to dance at the cultural event, or they want to dance at the wedding or the corporate event, this is where I think a lot of the discrimination happens. This is where a lot of the racism occurs in lots of different directions, right? Against African Americans. I've seen it happen here against American, very pale, white, you know, redheaded dancers. I've seen it against Asian dancers in my troupe. I've seen it, you know, all over the place. Um, and I guess, so my, my question, you know, like I always like to ask, you know, where do we go from here? What are the concrete actions that myself as a teacher, myself as a, a promoter of belly dance to the world in general can do to help fight, you know, to be actively anti-racist and to help pull more people into the fold, to invite them to this gigantic party we've got going on over here, right? I want everyone to, to know how amazing it is. Um, mm -hmm. And it's almost on two levels, right? It's almost on two levels. So I don't know, I know you've done both, right? Like, so you've looked, you've been there as a student and you've been there as a pro. So I guess maybe if we could just talk about what do you see as positive ways that we can affect change in those two realms? Because I feel like maybe those two realms are treated slightly differently, or maybe they're not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's just a general mind shift that needs to happen that will affect it all. What is your take on that? Well, thank you for asking. And I, once again, you're just amazing for doing this, but oh. um, <laughs> for being open. Um, because I came in such an unusual place where I was already a professional dancer or, and this is something God told me to do, um, my confidence was in the Lord. So that's the first thing. And my confidence was in this fact that I knew I was an amazing dancer, not because I made myself, because the Lord has given me that. I've been taking classes. So I had that confidence going in. And so any place you put me, I'm going to step out and I'm going to be confident. The other thing is, um, so I have that piece. So that person who's coming into it, the African-American woman, or, you know, if she's coming in this, know what you have first, make sure this is where you need to be. If, you, if you're going to be professional, the rules are the same with dance. If I could talk like a mom right now, the rules are the <laughs> same with dance as it is with singing, acting, drawing. If you really don't have that, then you need to keep it real. This is not for you. You should stay as, you know, but if you know, that this is a gift and your teacher has told you and you feel in the Lord has showed you, you know you are gifted. You need to fight to the end for to do what you were put on this earth to do. And the next thing I would say is find out, we talked about this and we'll go into it a little more, what kind of belly dancer are you? Because it's okay to carve out your space or to join, you know, to be who you are. And if we're going to bring in more cultures, you may, you may have to define what that is. And I want to talk to you more about that as a teacher. But the next thing is, I'm full of ideas. Right now, everyone, this is more practical for you as a teacher and to answer your question. We have platforms now. Everyone's online. How do we change things? If we were, back, if we were not going through COVID-19, I would say, do a performance with an African-American woman that you think is amazing and use your platform to do a duet with her. Use your platform to get her on there. You say, well, I'm going to come to your, I want to do something special this week with the restaurant. And I want to introduce you to this amazing dancer I have. I'm going to come this week with her. So I'm going to make sure everything's fine. So they can't lie and say she didn't do a good job because you'll be there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Introduce this beautiful, amazing dancer yourself. If you, you know what I mean? Make the target, be that change in that way. So as teachers, we have a power, you know, you can say something that can make her never want to dance again, but with that power comes responsibility and you can use that to introduce her to things. Pick someone that you feel I'm going to carry you right now. Mm -hmm. Harriet Tubman, she couldn't have done that without a white face up, up above. Somebody up there had to lie to hide us downstairs you know, down in the underground. So it's like she had allies. So they had to literally get themselves in the trenches to bless. And then it does, it's not going to go on forever because you're going to make that, you're going to, you're vetting them. You're giving them the seal of approval. And then you, at one point you won't have to do it anymore because she came with you. So that's one answer. A festival, 
creating a festival saying, I'm going to do a duet with this late girl that I think is amazing. They won't go with her by herself, but if she's with you, you know, artists do that. Singers do that. They put people on there, you know, they collab, they bring a new artist in. And we don't care about the new artist, but because he's saying with Justin Bieber, now I know that new artist and now I like that. He, he approved that person. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you use your, you really get in the trenches, really actually hold her hand and actually go to that restaurant with her and say, that's okay. I want to try something different. I want to just introduce you to something really special. She's amazing. And have the conversations with them, teaching them that in America, we have to be open-minded. We talked about that and, and we can't discriminate. I know that you, you want this, but sometimes I'm going to have to, there's this thing with, you know, your, your, where you're hi they're hiring you to give them someone that fits their thing. So I know how that works. The other thing is what's going on today. I don't think we leaped into today. We're, look what we're doing. You just did it. You're using your platform. We were thinking of doing something together as a dance here. We can use platforms like this. See, a lot of times they never got a chance to see it. It's one of those things where people, you can't tell them, they have to experience. So if you ever have found a dancer, if you do get one that you think is just like, oh gosh, people have practice here. Listen to by yourself. Latch her onto somebody who already has a following now people will give her a chance and now they're like, oh snap, she is pretty. You know, she is amazing. I think I'm gonna keep her name for, she doesn't fit this, but she might fit this. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So think of yourself as Justin Bieber and say, what would I do if I were Justin Bieber? <laughs> That's what I would do if I were Justin Bieber. <laughs> exactly. And so that's my, you know, I'm a problem solver. So this is my advice to anyone out there who's honestly wanting to do this and not just saying it, but you really are wanting to. And if there's only one listener who's truly wanting to and isn't insecure in their abilities, like my mom was saying, I can't be insecure as a teacher. I gotta let them. You're always gonna be remembered as the one that gave her that chance. She'll never forget that. And no one's ever gonna forget that. And one more thing, if anyone's afraid, because uh, I think that's what the problem with this institutionalizing, the, the, the um, privilege and all that, a lot of the hate is coming from someone who's afraid of losing that privilege. That's where it's coming from in all the different. Mm. We all have thumb, we have you know, finger uh, prints. No, there's no other Sahara. There's nobody like you. No one could ever be you, ever. And I don't care if you do the hip drops a million times. I'm never going to do it exactly the same as you. I'm not going to give the same energy as you. No one's going to ever be Patrice. I don't care how much you try to be me. I've taught so many people that, haven't you noticed with your students? They're, they're doing it there. So don't ever be afraid. God made you uniquely teacher and student. And no matter how great your student is, there's only one you. And I think that's the answer. Don't, if you want to get over this privilege thing that you, you think people are saying you have, or you didn't know you had, you just kind of inherited and it's not even your fault. And what do I do with it? Well, use it to show people that I want to share the space. That's mm -hmm. all. You're but never gonna lose. You're never gonna lose who you are. Oh, no, it's coming from a place of abundance, right? Yeah. That there's enough for everyone. Yeah. There really is in this big wide world. And so, yeah, absolutely, there should be no fear on the part of teachers that they're going to give away too much when it yeah. comes to their students, there's right? There's only one you. There's only mm -hmm. one you. Exactly. Absolutely. Great. So I love this advice to teachers, right? And how to make your classroom more inclusive and more aware of all the bodies and all the people yes. and where they're coming from. Would you have any advice to people who are, you know, sort of following, no, I don't know if anyone's going to follow in your exact footsteps because your story is so unique, but for other African-American women who are maybe looking at belly dance and saying, oh no, I don't think that's for me for whatever reason, any advice to them? Well, first of all, um, I've had a lot of them come to me when I, when I would teach, not teach on um, perform. And it's like, I've never seen myself. I've never seen myself. So, just know that if you're thinking about it, we do need to be out there on higher platforms because there's a need, there's a heart. When you do the parties, you're going to always hear someone say, oh my goodness, I've never seen someone that looked like me. And that's why I keep my natural hair and I'm just me. And you know, you know what you're going to get when I get there, the Caribbean fusion, because she's probably a black woman, <laughs> you know? So um, I would say, be true to yourself. That's what I would say. And if they're starting to repeat something you're really good at, take that and bottle that up teacher and student can use this together and start to get stronger in that because that's probably who you are and when you find out who you are go to the end with it become a master at it get the clothing get your get your act together you know what you're good at so that you can deliver i'm about write a check you can cash if you say you're going to do it deliver it and deliver it well would you agree 
Are you Absolutely. In that? Yeah. No, that's, that's definitely important. You've got to walk your talk, right? And she's going to, and if you have somebody, so in other words, we're talking about getting professional. If someone's going to be putting you out there, and they're going to put their name on the line. You have got to deliver. So stay in those classes knowing what you're good at. Know your strength and master it. Find your niche because there's going to be a group of people that love you. Gotcha. No, that's, it's, it's a beautiful thought. And I, I really hope, I really hope that's true. I, I want to believe that that's true. I know there's so many dancers in, in the belly dance community right now who are releasing their stories of frustration. They've worked their whole lives. They've won awards. They've done amazing things, but they've just never made it to where they've wanted to be professionally be, because they feel for, for racist reasons. And, and it's heartbreaking, heartbreaking yeah. to imagine that, that that could be the truth. And I, you know, I firm, I believe them. I mean, this is their experience. And so and so I really, I really pray and hope we can come to a place where when it is your calling and it is your passion and it is your authentic self that it will be accepted wholeheartedly, no matter what you look like, right? Like I yes. think that's, that's yes. so yeah. important. It's yeah. so important. These are the kinds of things that can be done to start because you're mm -hmm. always going to have pushback. But you got to go, you got to start somewhere. It's a mountain to climb, right? We're going to climb it together. <laughs> climb it together. <laughs> So I love this, Patrice. This has been amazing. Before we wrap up, I want to know where can people find you? What are you up to? How can we come dance with you and support you and promote you and love on you and do all those good things? Well, I'm on here like you. I'm on YouTube. We're sister YouTubers. And um, my channel is Patrice D. Evans, D apostrophe Evans. And um, I do four different shows, I guess. Sunday is a show where I focus on ministry directly from the Bible for women uplifting. I'm always moving. You won't believe it. I start off doing a little belly dancing and then I go into the so I probably get rid of a lot of people from the get-go. They're like, oh, she, uh-uh, she's a sinner. <laughs> what is she doing? <laughs> but it's what God told me to do, so I'm obedient. So I do a little something to move, and then I get into scripture, and I get into stuff like that. And that's on Sunday at 2 on my channel, live. And then on Tuesdays, I show my performances. I just show off performances of anything that I'm doing, even with acting. And so that's what I'm going to be doing today, posting something. On Thursdays, I talk about the hair, because I believe, and you know, with belly dance, hair is a big deal too, but there's a woman's glory. We love our hair. So I have a natural hair product line, Ayurveda Curls. So if anybody wants to know. And on Saturdays is when I pull it all together. It's the Belly Dance Fit with Patrice. Saturdays at 11, live on my channel. And I basically just help a woman unlock her joy practically, like pull it all together, body, mind, and spirit. And I use belly dance as a tool to just use movements to just kind of freestyle. And what they consider, we know it's improvisation, but a lot of people know it as freestyle. Just to make it a part of their vocabulary, just get comfortable. It's a good way to get started. So that's what I do on my YouTube channel. Awesome. You're not busy at all. <laughs> I love it. Every minute of it. That's love incredible. It. I'm so impressed. I can't wait. I'm totally going to jump in and try your, try your <laughs> belly down, all of it. I want to see all of it. I want to see all the things. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. And then we need to talk. Let's talk more about a collaboration. <laughs> it would be so much fun. It, it would be amazing. And now it's the time because it's all online and you know, Why not? this going on. So this is great. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Patrice. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about your journey, your story, which is such a unique one. And I hope that this brings to people um, a sense of hope, a sense of understanding, uh, a, a way forward, maybe a, a bit of marching orders for those of us who are in a position of privilege where we can yes. hopefully change the tide and work to promote not just diversity, but actively be anti-racist and get more people into our mm -hmm. classroom and inspire more women because we all know, all of us who belly dance know what a beautiful place it can be and what a healing dance it is. Yes. And so like, I want to heal this horrible wound that's happening right now with the dance. And I appreciate you helping me move that forward. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You're just so beautiful. And I just appreciate you so much. Oh, my, thanks, Tika. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for this important conversation. I would love to hear from you. Do you have something to add? Have you had a similar experience? Have you had a different experience? Are you an African-American dancer coming into the community who feels like maybe you're not welcome, maybe you're not invited, or maybe this just isn't for you because you haven't seen people like Patrice who have taken this and made it their own. I would love to continue the conversation. I feel like this kind of work helps us understand each other better and that is my 
goal with this is just to reach out and begin to create bridges across the community so that we can connect, we can communicate, and we can find very positive, proactive ways to move forward, to actively combat racism, and to find more ways to open up this beautiful community to everyone who could potentially benefit from it. Thank you so much for joining me and have a wonderful day.